Allah. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another edition of your favorite program. Let's talk, of course, on your favorite channel, Huda TV. And don't forget, please, to support Huda TV online at, at our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Huda TV, www.com, youtube.com slash Huda TV. In fact, anything slash Huda TV. You guys, we have a very interesting and exciting topic with two special guests, uh, two of my friends, actually. Uh, the first brother is actually, you know, we would like to do a program in the future about uh, postgraduate, you know, kids that just graduated. How can they uh, make their resume desirable and attractive to employers? How do you do a good interview? This is what we're going to be talking about in the future episodes, but not in this one. Of course, that's my good friend, Brother Mahmoud Said uh, from F Florida State University. Uh, also with us this evening, inshallah ta'ala, is my good friend, the host of Book Review. Uh, he's new to the Huda TV screen family, so please give him a warm welcome. And that's Brother Muhammad Hamza. Thank you very much. Alaykum wa And this is what we call in Arabic language, inshallah ta'ala. We call it Mufrid. We call it Muthenna Mudakr. Is that correct, brother? Yes. Mudakr. Mudakr. Yes. What did I say? Just didn't put the shadda. Okay, inshallah. Very good. So inshallah. we want to thank the brothers at Marcus Anil here in Cairo, my Arabic teacher, Muhammad Adil, for making good advances, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. Thank you for your time. I appreciate you guys in the studio audience. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome uh, to our program this evening. And you guys, we're going to be talking about a uh, culture shock. I think this is a really interesting topic for everybody, people who traveled from the Middle East to the West, from the West to the Middle East, and even within your own country, and even within the Middle East. I think it's a wonderful topic that has two perspectives. And it's an important topic because many Muslims travel, and they become uh, th they don't have a good relationship with the local people, and vice versa, because of this m cultural miscommunication. So we want to talk about this, inshallah, uh, this evening, uh, inshallah. Uh, brother, as we mentioned, uh, you traveled to the Florida State University, uh, and you traveled extensively throughout the uh, United States and the UK and Turkey. So tell me a little bit about some cultural um, miscommunications or culture, uh, culture shock that you experienced coming from Egypt to Florida State University. Uh, actually, I came from uh, a, s a small city called Fayoum, and that's uh, completely different from the, uh, the atmosphere in Florida, you know. Uh, Fayoum University, where I, I graduated from, is completely different from Florida State. Okay, uh, I had I, I I have gone through some cultural uh, differences, like even even in dealing with the salesperson, right. I didn't know that if if you put the money in on the counter in front of him and not in his hand or her hand, it's kind of offensive. I didn't know this, till a friend of mine he 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 lives he had lived in America for a long time. He told me never do this again. It's offensive. Okay. And uh, so many examples of this. I was I was kind of learning every day. And uh, I didn't know that you're uh, giving tips. It's kind of a must in, in the U.S. because here it's uh, just optional. Right, right, if, sure. if you don't give uh, kind of, uh, if you don't leave, no, yes. Right. It's like a rude thing. They think you're cheap yes, or something, right? Yes, I didn't know this before. Right. So every time uh, I, I go out with a, uh, with a friend or something, I just learn something new in the in right, everyday mashallah. life. Mashallah. Now, if I went back to the United States today and I drove my car, um, after driving in Egypt for a couple of years, I would probably like honk <laughs> my horn and like get cut somebody off and I, I would have to think, wait a minute, that might be offensive to the culture here. No, but, you know, seriously, Brother Muhammad, uh, I know that you were born and raised in Egypt and you, you moved to the KSA when you were in the third grade and you lived there as an adult and as a child. Yeah, that's true. So as an Arab and a Muslim in two Muslim Arab countries, what possibly cultural shock could you experience in the KSA? Well, normally uh, people w who go to Saudi Arabia or go to the Gulf in general at this age, they experience cultural shock. But in my case, alhamdulillah, I didn't. Uh, because um, I, I, I was lucky, alhamdulillah, I went to an international school where all my uh, colleagues there were um, from other countries other than uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, so things went smooth, alhamdulillah, and uh, I was also uh, nine years old at the time. So uh, this made it easy to adapt to the, to the culture, which is also, yeah, everyone is experiencing the same problem, Every, everyone there in the school um, were uh, at a foreign country. Right. So uh, uh, things, alhamdulillah, went good at the time. As a child, as a student. As a child, as a student. I went to Saudi Arabia another time uh, as an adult to work there. Um, that was uh, like maybe two or three years ago. Um, and uh, I stayed there for uh, some time working. Um, well, things weren't as good as a child, but alhamdulillah, it passed and it was it was fine. It but was someone fine, might say, what possible court culture shock can you can you experience going from one Muslim country to another? So there is some cultural differences between your native Egyptian culture and the Saudi culture. Yeah, yeah, there is, there is, especially when you're working there. You know, 
you have to learn a lot of um, a lot of things about the culture of surrounding you because you're dealing with it uh, on a daily basis um, and uh, it takes you like maybe six months to a year to, to, to do that to, to adjust to the culture of surrounding you especially because um, uh, not, not all of them you know uh, the, 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 the when you move to a, a country in the Gulf in particular uh, they have uh, an idea uh, like an, uh, they have um, uh, a certain uh, idea about uh, Egyptians in, in particular um, so you have to uh, show them uh, that not all Egyptians are the way they think right of you course know? yeah and you know brother Mahmoud also uh, we certainly you know I get on the air and I could I criticize and complain or rather bring to people's attention certain cultural practices in the United States that I think are un-Islamic or here in Egypt but in any event let's talk about the cultural shock you experienced in going from Fayoum your native city in, e in Egypt to Florida State University which is a huge totally different world isn't it yeah it is actually um, I had so many uh, problems with the students like uh, for example here uh, you, you are you feel responsible for the students if you are teaching them and all of the, all of these uh, issues but there you, you just teach and go uh, out of the class it doesn't matter whether they got the what you said or not it's a just the whole responsibility lies on the uh, on the students you know and uh, one day I had uh, one of my students, he was sitting like and, and had a, having his legs stretched in front of my face. This and is I, in Florida. I, yes, and I told him this is totally offensive. I came from a Middle Eastern country, and this is totally offensive in, in our culture. And he said, No, I, I, do, I don't see it offensive. I told him I see it offensive, and uh, I'm sorry to, if I ask you to just put it down or something like this. And they were surprised, and I told them, You are you are studying Arabic and the Arabic culture. You have to at least practice it, sure. and you have to respect uh, the background I came from, sure. uh, especially that I'm, I'm, I'm your teacher. <laughs> right, right. So uh, I had kind of these cultural shocks, and also I was teaching in a in kids' school, and there you cannot even touch a student. But here we just kind of beat them or any 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 of these <laughs> kind uh, of punishments but there you have no authority over the students so what would you s what's the difference between the relationship between the, the teacher and the student here in your native Egypt and in, in America what's the main uh, distinction between the two here it's more formal there it's more uh, informal and, and informal. what about the respect from of the student to the teacher uh, it's the respect from the student uh, to the teacher or vice versa uh, of the excuse me of the student to the teacher right does he respect the teacher more in Egypt or in America? Did the student respect the teacher, look up to him, respect his knowledge and wisdom? I think uh, you have this kind of fear here, you know, to talk to your teacher or your professor uh, at college, but there it's kind of, it's okay, it's fine. Right. You can okay. just, you can even go out with them for dinner or something like this. Okay. It's okay. less formal than here. Okay, excellent point. Okay, thank you. Brother, Brother Mohammed, now you're working here on the channel, Kudu TV, mashallah, and we have many, mm -hmm. many people come from overseas, uh, presenters, <coughs> uh, sheikhs, to present programs and while while they're here of course we have to we or we are pleased and honored to host them so how is it i mean because there is a cultural difference if someone's coming from canada the united states the uk the ksa anywhere how, how do you and, and you are on the front line dealing with them um, managing their time arranging the shows yeah, or, or, so i get your point i get your okay. point uh, i think uh, this is not a big problem uh, because uh, we always uh, deal with uh, such personalities um, and we, uh, alhamdulillah, we got, uh, like me, myself, I understand a lot of their backgrounds, a lot of the cultures uh, with regards to their, um, uh, the, the, um, like preparing, uh, with regards like to hosting them, you know. So uh, uh, regarding this issue, it's not a big problem, but I think uh, it's, it's, it's a bigger pro problem when it comes to, uh, to the other, uh, like, um, you know, preparing a program, uh, we don't do it, you don't do it on your own, you know, so you need uh, the support of the other uh, people around, you know, okay. so a lot of them, they don't understand these cultural differences, so it, it is a problem sometimes, as uh, you, you mentioned. Of course, you know what I think the key to cultural understanding is, and to minimize the disputes between Muslims, especially uh, between cultures, especially, it's, it is very important between Muslim cultures, you know, is understanding the language. Uh, so for someone who comes to an Arabic country, if he doesn't speak Arabic, of course, it's going to be problematic mm -hmm. from the beginning. Uh, mashallah, you guys speak fluent native English, so this is very I helpful. I agree so you have to with understand you. That. Th that's a problem, but uh, alhamdulillah, uh, the brothers who come to Egypt uh, th that I have met, uh, they, are, um, they are willing, they're willing to take this 
um, hardship because they love Islam. Th th that's something I, I have to tell you. Uh, these brothers, they do a great effort um, uh, living here. Like some of them are coming from, like yourself, you're coming from a very beautiful place. Uh, like everything is neat, everything is, is beautiful, you know? Um, as far as I heard, y y your, your home uh, country uh, like uh, yeah, yes, is a bit I'm, I'm, uh, San Francisco is one of the uh, most beautiful states in, in America, yeah. that, uh, you know, as far as I know. Um, uh, some of the bro brothers are coming from Australia, some of them are coming from beautiful places, you know, and they're coming here and living in, you know, uh, very difficult uh, circumstances. No, no, not say. difficult, like in very poor areas. Um, sometimes some of them are, are forced yeah. to do that for at least for for some time, you know, and they take all this hardship for the sake of Allah. So yeah. I, I, I really respect that and I really think these brothers are, are, uh, are, are I wish I, I'd be like them, you know. Thank you. Let's go to the studio audience, Brother Mahmoud, Brother Muhammad. I want you guys to share a moment of culture shock. Go ahead, Brother. Yeah, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Yeah, uh, I believe I've, I have cultural shock when I was, I was born in Saudi in case A, and I stayed there until I was 15 years old. There, you know, I was uh, in a multicultural society. Our neighbors from Africa, from Asia, from uh, Europe, from many culture, soci many other societies. But when I came to Egypt, also I'm native Egyptian, but I was <laughs> shocked. <laughs> you know, like there is some very big difference, you know. Like when you uh, shake hands with a woman, it's haram. So. Some people here say, no, you can. <laughs> so I won't shake your hand with women. No, you are a terrorist. You are a rank terrorist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 15 years old. <laughs> so I, I had a hard, you know, like hard time in first in here. Yeah, of course. Yeah, subhanAllah. Yeah. Thank you, brother, for sharing that. But do you have something you want to share as well? This is a culture shock. Uh, a moment where here or abroad or anywhere. Yes, um, I'm always with... Uh, oh, with hold, hold the mic up, brother. I'm okay. sorry, go ahead. I'm always with tourists here in Cairo, always. But the most people that shocked me, really, is the, the Jap Japanese people. <laughs> MashaAllah, why? Because simply, they do apply a lot of Islamic manners, but without Islam. SubhanAllah. This yeah. really shocked me. Like what? The appre they, they appreciate the people, they appreciate the human being very much. And this is in Islam, it's something holy. You yeah. must, you, you in Islam, I know exactly wha what, is, what is a person the person who is the God himself create, create him. So I must appreciate him very much. The Japanese people do appreciate the people very, very much. At least you can feel it from the booing, from the booing. Also, they, they treat very good with, uh, with the blind people. Yeah. While in Islam, it's, it's also something you, you must do. So this is, this is the thing is that I, 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 it shocked me. They are not Muslim. By nature, they apply Islam. You know, of course, I, I like that they're very clean, organized, and on time. It's great yeah. qualities. But the bowing is a little bit strange because, we, as Muslims, we shouldn't I, bow. I, I, I wanted to, to say something regarding this. Uh, I have a friend. He's uh, half Japanese, half Egyptian. Mashallah. But he looks, he looks Japanese. He's <laughs> Japanese, man. Uh, so so uh, he, hopefully, inshallah, he will be doing uh, with me a book review soon, <laughs> inshallah. <laughs> um, he, he's, he's, he's excellent, man. In his work, he's on time. And he's a Muslim, alhamdulillah. So he has both uh, That's good. things, alhamdulillah. The, the best of both worlds. Yeah, alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> Brother, what about you? Okay, let's talk about coming from Fayyum where the women are covered and there's a clear role or distinction between the, the role of genders and the interaction of genders here in, in Egypt for the most part and going to Florida State where it's the complete opposite. I mean, how long did it get you to like to understand the cultural differences and how to work around that? Uh, yes, uh, it took me a while. I, I, many times I had uh, female students who, who were coming and just they, they are willing or waiting for me to give them a hug or something like this and I just step back and, t and say no, I don't do this. <laughs> I, I <laughs> and that actually was strange uh, for me and I didn't Mashallah. have this before. Uh, I didn't even imagine it. And once uh, anyone Mashallah. just come closer, I just step He's back. He's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and this is a big thing, yeah. Yes, okay. and I say, don't do this. Right. And uh, they, they start asking why, and, and I say, because I'm Muslim and I'm, 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 I'm from an Arab background. And they start asking questions, and I, I just made it, uh, I brought it to their attention that not only Muslims are covered. 
it's uh, even non-Muslims in Egypt. It's it's a very rare that you find women in shorts or or, or like in yeah. uh, in short uh, skirts or or any of these. Uh, and it's not the idea only of of Islam. It's also the idea of culture. Okay, sure. And they 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 were interested to know more about these issues. It's an open uh, door for Darwin. So yes. Uh, Winston Churchill once said, uh, I believe to the effect, the UK and America are one. Uh, Two nations divided by one language, play a joke playing on the fact that they both speak English, yes. but it's so different, okay? The, the way they speak in England, as you remember, my good friend Rafi Abu Malik, as well as the way they speak in America. So did you experience that going to Saudi? Because they do have a different accent, and, and you Egyptians have a very different <laughs> accent. So I mean, how long did that take you to get used to things? Because I've mastered I, the Egyptian dialect, yeah, and now I'm, I'm looking to master the Saudi dialect. Well, <laughs> it, it <laughs> <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. <laughs> that's great, that's great. Inshallah, you will, you will do it. Inshallah, <laughs> hopefully. Um, um, well, regarding this issue, I want to tell you that it is a big problem. It's really a big problem. A lot of the, um, the Egyptians who, which go there, they have a problem understanding. You know, some of them, he goes to buy something and he finds the guy telling him, uh, like, uh, um, uh, a very known example, okay? I don't want to say the words, but you know there is there are some words in in, in, that, that in the Saudi language and which is spread all around Saudi Arabia. You know, in the shops you you find um, uh, Pakistanis, you know, but they talk in the same way the Saudis <laughs> yeah, talk. You know, right, right. so uh, th th there is there is a problem there. Um, but when you go to um, when when you go to like m m my case, alhamdulillah, when you go to uh, a, s a school that. Um, was alhamdulillah uh, international. international so we just talk in english right. you know and outside i used to alhamdulillah talk in english to the pakistani guys and it, it was it was fine it was okay. fine but when i went to work there there was the problem and we're gonna talk about i had i had to talk i had to talk like them you know how long did it take you to get into that um it took me mm. i told you about a year Aish? about a year Ish, yeah, <laughs> you, you say these things, but I, I'm working with them. I have to, I have to. Right. Talk. So you have to adapt. And I think Brother uh, Mahmoud uh, had to do the same when he went to uh, America. Right. And uh, you guys have the American English for sure. Yes, I, I mean, I totally. I actually was uh, speaking this kind of neutral English, you know, like water. Okay. Okay. But once I I, I, I went to the U.S. Cancelled. Yes, cancelled <laughs> everything. It's uh, just water. Right, because okay. if, if if he the waiter comes to me and asks like what would you like to drink and I say water he excuse me right excuse right. me and it's uh, just water <laughs> yeah it takes a long yeah that's a great point let's talk more about this after the break inshallah you guys stay tuned for more let's talk assalamu alaikum welcome back to let's talk where we are talking about culture shock and before the break we're talking about culture shock coming from going from Egypt uh, to the KSA and the difficulty even speaking the same language, the language barrier. I remember we, we were in Hajj, and the driver answered the phone. He said, hello, Allah. And I told the Egyptian <laughs> guy, I said, do you understand anything from this man? What did he say? So they understood him because they speak Arabic. For me, it was like totally strange situation because I had grown accustomed to the, the pitch and tone of the way the Egyptian people speak Arabic. So mm -hmm. uh, in any event, uh, let's move on to the, the issue of foreigners, Muslims from the Western countries, m immigrating here to the Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, what advice can we give them? Because oftentimes we see them, they come here, they begin to complain. They, they complain about the local people, the local culture, without really thinking, okay, brother, did you take time to learn the local language? Did you take time to understand the local culture? Did you think about maybe your culture is wrong sometimes and not only complain about the locals? So, I, and then in the next segment, we can talk about the reverse, inshallah. Uh, brother, go ahead. Actually, uh, when I traveled, I, I was complaining about everything. Uh, the, uh, the, the foreigners, if they come to Egypt or to the Middle East, they are coming, they are experiencing the kind of lower, uh, you know, a lower, lower status of the community, maybe. So if uh, I had the, the other way, I was I traveled to the U.S., I was experiencing a higher status of the yes, community. Yes. And uh, despite of this fact, I was also complaining. I was complaining that everything is uh, clean and organized, you know. <laughs> so uh, you will never find that perfect culture that, you, you, uh, that matches the culture you have lived in. So the, uh, the idea is, W whatever uh, you experience, wherever you go, you'll find these kind of uh, uh, drawbacks or uh, the, the right. shortages of, yes. of, the, uh, of the culture. So never, never try to complain about this because the others feel uh, offended by yes, this. Sure. When I, I, for example, the Jews here in Egypt, 
has right. sugar. It's kind of sugary, you know. Right, right. In America, it's, it, uh, it doesn't have sugar. Right. So I was complaining about this. And they were, co they were offended because I, I say, I, 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 what I say is, our juice is better than yours. Right, so we offended. Yes, yeah. so, so they start being offended. And, right. and they, they kind of, they try they to fight insulted. back. Yeah, yes. they feel insulted, right? Yes. Uh, after this, I was, okay, just experience the new uh, taste of juice you, you never tried before. Yeah, right. That's an idea. And uh, I think Muhammad has some more uh, tips for people traveling from a, a community to another just to, to avoid this cultural yes, shock. Yes. Go ahead, um, well, there are three things. You should um, understand first, and then respect, and then accept. Nice. Okay? So let's start with the first one. Understand the culture surrounding you. And then you respect it. And then you accept it. Respect it because these people are just human beings, just like, like you are, you know? And uh, they have their point of view, they have their, um, the way they were brought up, you know? So you should respect that. And that, that will lead you to accepting it. And when you accept it, you start living through it. You and start living it. and you are, you're, you're going through it and things are going smooth, you know? The problem comes when you don't understand, you reject, and you don't respect. You say that uh, you belittle others, and, and, or you look up to them and say, wow, uh, I could never be like that, you know? That, that's where the problem comes. Yeah, great. And then that leads you to unacceptance. Yeah. And here w w the problem happens, you know? When you don't accept, then if you are a Muslim, who uh, convert, who travel to the Middle East, and you don't accept, you, you might go back to your country and that might bring you back, uh, like, or... or uh, you Affect you might your religion. Yeah, that yeah. Might, co might cause you to... to even if you stay a Muslim, but you become a very... Um, a non-practicing Muslim, you know? So, um, I guess, and if, 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 if uh, on the other way, you're, you're traveling to, uh, like, uh, earn money or uh, have a... Uh, li uh, like, improve your living, um, this would also uh, cause the same problem you wouldn't accept, and you would go back, and you wouldn't achieve your, uh, your aim. Thank you, brother. And really, well, I, I'm going to try to implement that, because myself, I, I complain a lot, and I'm always complaining, this is wrong, it's bad, we do this in America, we don't do that. Uh, so this is good advice, I certainly appreciate yes, it. And, and one, one more thing I would like to add is uh, learn and read about the culture or the country you are going to visit before going there. If you know that you are going to spend a year at the uh, United Arab Emirates, for example, just read about the culture. Yeah. Read right. about mm -hmm. the the geography about the, of the country. That's why when when you are uh, like uh, traveling for tourism, they give you a brief about the place yeah. you're going to. Yeah. yeah so yeah. when I lived in America, That's I true. was living in a, a kind of a hilly place. It, it's a full it's a full of hills and and the waves are going up and down. And I was complaining about this, but if I read about the the culture, the the, uh, the landscape, the, the, the landscape about the uh, city, I would be more able to accept this sure. because I had the idea That's back in mind. That's a reason, but there is an internal reason, which is making yourself um, ready for this. Yes, you know, you should be ready internally. Y yourself. Yeah, preparing yourself and making yourself ready to uh, understand when you go there. Because it's, uh, no matter how you read, you have to go there and experience. Yes. Okay? And then respect others. That's something internal. You have to work on yourself, you know? And then um, start accepting, you know? Yes. And, and that's very, very essential. That's yeah, uh, for anyone who's traveling, in Thank general, you. especially the converts, you know? Because they come here, people ain't organized, things aren't clean, streets everywhere. You know, they have a problem, so... Yeah. Actually, I ha uh, one day I had a problem in, in not to, to read uh, about the country bef be before visiting it. And I was leaving from Florida and the, it, it was too hot there. <laughs> and I was <laughs> going to London, which was too <laughs> cold. And I, w <laughs> I went there in shorts and, 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 uh, and half sleeves, you know. <laughs> so I was ki kind of uh, being a meltdown and then frozen. Yeah, right. So <laughs> that was my mistake, not to read about the country before visiting. <laughs> What about the, thank you brother, what about the language issue? I mean, a lot of brothers, they come here, they're very enthusiastic, okay, about being in a Muslim country. They didn't speak any Arabic like myself. Mm -hmm. Then they get to the country, so obviously if you can't understand and communicate, this affects your human relationships, you can't build friends. Number two, you have a lot of arguments with people when there shouldn't be. It's just a, really a misunderstanding in the true sense of the word. Also, the brothers complain, oh, they don't speak textbook Arabic here anyways. 
Well, there's no country on earth that speaks textbook English anyways. I laugh in America when the politician says, when he's running for election, he says, no more Hispanics in this country. Learn them to speak, teach them to speak English. I say, subhanAllah, my friend Rafi from England, he used to laugh at me. He would say, this is English you're speaking? <laughs> you know, so how important is it, you guys, and I want to go to the studio audience after this as well, uh, to take time to study the language before you arrive, inshallah. Yes, and that's one more point. Uh, and I think if you, if you are speaking the language of the country, it's a lot easier to, to learn and, and to, to be eager to, uh, to have friends and, and experience the culture and the country. And one more thing, I, I had so many of, of, of my students when I was teaching Arabic at the Florida State University, they were thinking that all of the Arab countries having the same culture and are having the same language. As long as they are having the same language, they are having the same culture. I told them no, absolutely, it, it's not true. Because, uh, for example, if I'm speaking to someone who, from Morocco, uh, he has to switch either to Egyptian dialect or to Fusha or to English because I do not at all understand mm -hmm. the Moroccan right, dialect right, right. and this is not offensive to them they are having their own dialect and their own uh, cultural things right. so know? he has to go to Fusha for you yes okay yeah good point yeah the language is a big deal within the Arab world even Yemen to Egypt this is a big difference uh, excellent points brother by the way about the language you encourage the brothers overseas before they come look take a class or two in Arabic before you come this will help you tremendously well I, I, I yeah that, that's a good idea but I, I'm afraid if, if we tell them that that would uh, like make things difficult you know discourage um, them from coming or something uh, so so I guess I guess it's better to say just like um, read about the culture and get re get yourself ready just like I said a while ago right. you get yourself ready you have to be ready. You, you're experiencing something for the sake of Allah. Yeah, okay. That's, that's for the conference, you know? But to study Arabic too when they get here? Um, yeah, yeah. They, they could study wh wh whichever way, you know? Uh, it's important that they have in mind that they're experiencing something that is difficult. It has its hardships, but it has at the end of uh, the reward, inshallah. Thank you, guys. Let's go to the audience, Brother Islam. How important is it, in your opinion, uh, uh, to, for foreigners before they come to the Middle East to study the Arabic language? And what has your experience been dealing with or speaking with meeting foreigners here in the Middle East? Uh, do they have a positive outlook or do they have a negative outlook? Or Speak about that, brother. Um, <coughs> uh, I don't think uh, foreigners should learn the language unless they, they are spending a long time here. But for uh, like tourists or something, um, I was working one time and I saw this blonde guy and he was obviously uh, a foreigner and he was speaking with a taxi driver but they, they are not understanding each other. So the taxi driver called me and he, he told me, um, could you see what he's talking about? So the guy went to me and said, do you speak English? I was like, what are you talking about? I don't speak English. As I was joking with him, of course. Okay. Then I told him, I, I want to go to uh, Al Tahrir Square and he showed me the, w the written word in English. I said, okay. So I told the, the, the driver, he wants to go to Al Tahrir Square. Right. Okay, so the, the taxi driver was like, uh, he looked to the foreigner again and was like, you, mm -hmm. uh, and spoke with him in Arabic, but slow. Tahrir mm -hmm. Square. And <laughs> it's like he would understand Arabic if he spoke That's slowly. That's what they do in America too. <laughs> this is the computer that I say it really slow or something <laughs> as if the guys can understand. He's speaking slowly so the other guy would understand. And so that's why the language, the language barrier here is it's, it's like, a big problem for foreigners yeah, of and course. many people don't don't can't communicate with, uh, yes, with each other yeah of course this is this is a big issue w what, what, what i would like to say is uh, foreigners can still uh, live here without learning arabic you know but their life would be easier if they if they can speak arabic because most of the population they they can speak english or at least give you directions or uh, sell and buy you yes, know sure. this functional language yeah. but it's if they if they speak at least like a little bit of arabic uh, they, their life would be easier yeah even just a nice break i read on on wikipedia it, it encouraged uh, people traveling to egypt to learn to say salamu alaikum <laughs> and they said it's, it's, it's really a nice icebreaker described it you know for non-muslim people it's really really interesting what about the concept of money between westerners and people in the middle east where in the west you know i guess we're more rigid or, or strict or um we measure how much we spend Whereas here in the Middle East, perhaps people people are, are more likely to give somebody money without expecting anything in return. Uh, people do favors w for each other without thinking about a monetary um, benefit. Mm. Whereas when we come from the West, for some reason, we always think, okay, how much am I getting paid? Let's clarify this before I purchase this. How much does this cost? We have a different way of dealing with money, and this makes a lot of problems. Yeah, that's true. That's true, especially the compensation. Right, right. Why, why, why is that? <laughs> I don't know. You can ask uh, Brother... Uh, what about... Per Go ahead. 
Uh, I have noticed this, like in America, the the, uh, the economical status is a lot <coughs> higher than Egypt, and uh, they. Uh, I was surprised to find so many Americans thinking about the dollar they are going to spend, and their salary is kind of six thousand. Right. You know. You think and I was double. I was amazed. Like, uh, do you care about the 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 ten dollars they are going to save if you are going shopping or something? Right. It's it's nothing. Okay. I wouldn't care if I, if I had this song. Yes, yeah. I wouldn't care. Yeah. That's what I say. But I if find I them the caring song, about the about care. like ten dollars in a whole shopping uh, session, you know. Yeah. Uh, but here, I don't think this differs a lot, uh, taking into consideration that the salaries here are a lot lower, you know. Mm -hmm. You know what's interesting That's when true. foreigners come to Egypt, or the Middle East rather in general? Americans are used to going to a supermarket where the price is written on the item. Yes. So you ring it up on the cashier, and he'll tell you two two fifty, yes. and he'll happily pay two fifty, even if it's more than price because it's marked. But then when you come to the Middle East, there will be no price marked on the on the item that you're purchasing. So this becomes something you know strange or f uncomfortable, or perhaps you'll purchase an item or eat something at a restaurant before knowing the price. Mm, yes. So and then afterwards you would negotiate the price with the person here in the Middle East. Well, in the United States, you're going to order from a menu. Mm -hmm. This hamburger Price. cost me nine dollars, and I will leave nine dollars and plus two dollars for the tip. So this creates a problem, doesn't it, for foreigners? Uh, it does. It but does. what do you think? Yeah, I think it does, and I think the um, unfortunately, what you're saying about uh, the U.S. is the Islamic uh, way of dealing. You know, uh, you should know the price of something before um, purchasing it. Yeah, that's the Islamic right. way. Uh, unfortunately, it's not implemented here in a lot of cases. And uh, inshallah, hopefully, uh, things will change. I certainly think it's a good thing, you know, to take care of how much money you spend and just to take account of this stuff. Perhaps it's a cultural difference, you guys. It yeah. is. But <laughs> in any event, the next segment, let's talk about the cultural shock. Let's reverse it. Talk about the people traveling to the Western world as Arabic teachers like yourself or students or to work and uh, see what cultural shock they experience is and what good things the Middle Eastern culture has to offer and what bad and what things that were not desirable in the Western culture, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. You guys stay tuned for more of that talk. You can't go anywhere because, of course, this is your favorite channel, Huda TV. So we'll be right back after the short break. Welcome back to Let's Talk. We're talking about culture shock. Before I go to you two brothers here, inshallah, I want to go to the studio audience, uh, inshallah ta'ala. Real quickly, quickly before we do that, I want to make note what you said, brother. Your name, Mahmoud, and the name Muhammad comes from the, the Fa'al Mahdi, which is Hamada. Yes. Mahmoud is the source, master. And what about Muhammad? No, I guess that's wrong. That's wrong? Yeah. Actually, you told which me this. Here, I, I, I was talking about my name. Okay. Your name comes from the, the, uh, the past tense verb. Hamada? Both of them. Both of them. You see, okay, this is actually... But Muhammad is kind of an adjective that is intense. Okay. No. This and is yours is... I know that. And this is the master, the source. Yes. So what we're doing, we're teaching the viewers to get into the Arabic language a little bit before they travel to the Middle East to break down that culture shock, inshallah ta'ala. Excellent. You guys go to the studio audience. I want you guys to share with me another culture shock experience that you experience right here in your native country or perhaps abroad. Go ahead. You know... Uh, it's very there is we are both like in KSA and Egypt we talk Arabic language, but like you said it's there, there is different in culture and different views of word like when you say walad boy, we here in Egypt if I call someone an older man like thirty years or even twenty years I call him walad hey boy you know it's like <laughs> a fa I'm yeah, insulting yeah. him yeah, right. but back in in KSA. We could call someone is 50 years old. <laughs> walad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, walad. Hey, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's different, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's no problem there, you know. It's yeah. like, that's normal. That's yeah, a that's good, a great point. You know, that's good for him. And that's funny because it's come from the same, the same language, yeah. you know. So that's, a, that's an interesting point. But as far as culture shock, in my, in my case, brother, uh, I'm not shocked by the Egyptian culture. The Egyptians are shocked by my culture. <laughs> yeah, you can tell us your experience, Brother Manik. Yeah. Uh, you I came I here to Egypt. How did it... Uh, how, how long have you lived here? You know, I've been here three years, and you know, usually when Americans come to a foreign country, they're like shocked. But I shocked the native people here. They're like <laughs> culture shock for me, you know? <laughs> but Brother Muhammad, I'm actually, my parents are actually Greek, so they're not Muslims, so, but I come from this background. So actually, the culture is very similar. So this would prepare me from the culture perspective. SubhanAllah. The right. Greeks, they always raise their voice. Okay, the, here's the negative qualities that, share, that are shared in the Middle East, okay? They always raise their voice. They interrupt each other. They're not punctual. Um, they spend long hours drinking coffee. So these things 
uh, these negative, there's good qualities we'll talk you mean about. Egyptians are like that. Oh, I didn't mean to fix. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Greek culture, okay? So there's many similar cultures in the Middle East. Uh, Egyptians, you know, they raise their voice. Greeks are like that, but not Egyptians. You wouldn't say Egyptians raise their voice when they speak? No. <laughs> <laughs> so what I would say is they, they are getting too much closer when they are talking to each other. Right, sure. That that's happens here. Yeah, or for example, the men, they hold hands when they walk here. Yes. Oh, men. that's a good one. You know, I read online, really funny, uh, on Wiki Travel. It said to Americans, uh, please take note that they're not homosexuals. This is the customs. <laughs> SubhanAllah, made me laugh so much. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, would, they would think that coming from their country, this is a, you know, this is a friendship thing, or kissing on both cheeks, which yes. is a custom here. Yeah. I was already um, accustomed to that being Greek, you know, P people do that. So uh, for me, it was uh, helped me with the... With the um, so so you do, you th do you think you could live in Egypt without speaking Arabic? Uh, he, I mean, you, you, you can, I suppose, because many, many people speak English all around the world. But to really live in a country, I to believe... To taste it. To yeah, yeah, to taste it, to, to make friends. Hmm. To, I had a friend of mine came from England. He, so he stayed four years. I, I didn't feel he enjoyed the country, the positive things, because if you can't speak, you can't make a friend, you know. You can't understand the situation around you. And most importantly, you can't express yourself. How yes. frustrating is it when you want to tell somebody something? You really want to get something off your chest, but you, can't have, you don't have the words to say it. Uh, yes. Has that happened to you in the States? Uh, when I was sick, I went to the hospital and I couldn't explain my situation <laughs> because That's I don't know any of the English like medical uh, terminology. And I, I just I was pointing and explaining in kind of simplified English, which doesn't make sense for, for right. the doctors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, good point, yeah. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree with you more. That's what I mean about uh, knowing a little bit of the language before you come. Uh, because if you can't express yourself, I mean, this is the source of a lot of frustration that the that foreigners that's have. That's a big barrier between you and the culture you're going to. But it's not the only one. It's right. not the only one. Um, let's talk about other barriers that people um, uh, face when they, when they go to a, a different culture. Um, I guess the traditions, traditions. Uh, is bigger than the language. Yeah, great I point. I guess traditions yeah. are bigger. Like, uh, as the brother mentioned, in the States, they... Uh, the, the, the he was forced with the, with the, with the, his colleagues they wanted to hug him and right. th that's bigger in my in my opinion than the um, language, the language. Yeah, right. so it's traditions here we have different traditions um, than a lot of the foreigners which come to us uh, in Saudi Arabia they have uh, as you said the Yom Watani they had they have their own traditions um, also um, when it comes to marriage when you, when you when, when a foreigner decides to marry from the country he he he, he went to or he he's living in or he moved to, um, it's, it's a big problem. You can tell us about that. You're, well, actually, you're, you're married to an Egyptian. No, my I wife told me, you know, before you came here, you were very quiet, you were soft-spoken. And now, you know, you complain about the local people, but you're actually louder than them. <laughs> she said, you became louder. I said, but you know what? You have to speak up. We live in a big city. There's lots of noise. But, but that's, that's a very good, like, uh, that you, you're so... Um, you're living uh, it to the maximum, <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know? <laughs> so if, 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 you, if, you'd, if you'd done that, Married to uh, an Egyptian, that that's that's uh, that that shows that you uh, adapted to the culture uh, really fast, mashallah. But you know what? I, I want to. My wife asked me to pull over to buy some bananas on the side of the road. So you can tell us about the tradition, uh, the differences in, in yeah in marriage. Yeah, you know, in marriage, actually, you know, it is there is a culture uh, differences that you have to be patient on both sides with, and you have to know that, and you have to be patient with that, and you have to be a mature adult about that because there is differences between yeah. cultures. Yeah, for sure. For sure, you know, and w I, I, I believe we have to take the good of each culture because, for example, I left my car in the middle of the road and I got out of the car to buy bananas and everybody was honking behind me. So my wife said to me, why don't you pull over to the side of the road and buy the bananas so you don't block traffic? I said, but everybody does that here. She said, just because everybody does it doesn't mean you should do it. Mm. So we have to take the good part of the culture and leave the bad. For example, in the United States, they celebrate many, many, many holidays, like Thanksgiving, for example, Fourth yes. of July. And many of my Muslim friends said, stay away from these holidays. But here in the Middle East, they also have some holidays, even in this country, that are, you know, a bit strange, mm. not from my culture. So what do I say? I say, you know, I'm, I, I, I don't, I politely uh, disengage from this. That way you don't offend people's cultural yes. sensibilities. For sure, and, and not all, every culture is perfect. Right. So you need to just select or pick wh whatever uh, you, you see or uh, the, the, the dean says this is permissible or this is okay. And then you can just make your perfect person. Right, yeah, Which sure. Is you. Right, right. And even with the food differences, things like that, yeah, you have to take care. You can't offend the people yeah. by saying this is uh, bad food. You know, I, I don't want to eat that. Thank you very exactly. much. Yeah, I think that's exactly. a great uh, thing to do uh, as well. And always remember that uh, these people are Muslims and you are Muslims and you came here to live with them. What did you come here for? 
to complain about the way they speak Arabic, to complain that the streets are messy, to complain, complain. And actually, you find some at the end, you'll find just one answer. If you are complaining about the any everything, so why are you living here? Right, yeah. And you That's think what we said. Yeah. Understand, respect, and then accept. Yeah. If you, if you don't manage to understand and respect, you'll never accept and you'll never live in the place. Eventually, you'll leave. Yeah, great point. Yeah. And I realize as an adult, many people live in America and they complain about it. And in Egypt, they complain about it. And people are complaining. So I realize as an adult, you have a, a decision. You can live where you want, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So make the best of where you are and uh, don't complain. You uh, know, uh, so much. Actually, I would like and to... And the highest level of acceptance is that, like yourself, mashallah, marrying an Egyptian woman, that, that shows that you... Mashallah, you adapted accepting and you everything. Accepted and, you <laughs> and you did everything, man. <laughs> Mashallah. Actually, I would like to, to advise the yeah, foreigners. <laughs> the foreigners coming to Egypt, to, uh, if they're uh, if they're going to stay in Egypt or any of the Arab countries uh, for a short time, they they can just go by 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 using English. But if they are willing to live for uh, like more than five months, okay, I would recommend that they learn Arabic because I know someone here uh, in in my city. She lived in, in uh, Egypt for three years, and uh, she, she was married to an Egyptian. She has a kid, and she doesn't speak Arabic. You know what I learned about with the Arabic? You, you have to make an effort. It doesn't come for free. Yeah. You and also, but, but if you know the basics, but, you'll, but you'll, you'll I, just I learn everything. I, I don't okay, agree yeah. with you on, on one point. It's not, um, it's not impossible to yes. live in an, in an Arab country when it's you're, not, not. you're not speaking Arabic and you're speaking your language. It's easy. It's easy. But you have to just, just as I said, internally, it's easy, but if internally you be able to accept, you accept know? This, yes. if, if you do that, then it's not a big deal. Right. You know? yeah, yes, yeah. what I mean, it's, it's easy to live with other languages, but if it, it's especially easier. Especially English. And not all the brothers are able to do that. Yes, you know, so sure. if we say you have to learn, then no, then no, I, I, I didn't difficult. mean have to have to it's learn. Helpful, I mean yeah. I would recommend. Yeah, because it will make your life yeah, sure, easier. Yeah, sure, sure. I agree with Take you. Take care about something. Also, is uh, body language. Body language is important. Yeah. It's different from culture to culture. <laughs> oh, well, like, you know, I, I grew up like I said with Greek people, so I they're hugging each other, they're close to each other. I know this. They kiss each other. They speak to each other at a close distance. Uh, Westerners, for example, this is like weird, and they feel offended or uncomfortable. Sometimes I think they don't move their Egyptians and Arabs. They move their hands. When if they if speak. you bet the child like on his on maybe his the head, parent yes. will think you're a weirdo yes. because there's so many sexual perversions over there. So here, you know, the people here tend to love the children and they touch them and s give them a candy. In America, they will say they teach you, don't take candy from strangers, right? Yeah. Uh, quick story. <laughs> I heard that. Right. Uh, I was walking down the street and I had it with a friend, my Egyptian friend, and I had a bag of chips. I ate it and I threw the bag down. Now I didn't even litter in America. But for some reason, I just felt inclined to do it. I mean, everybody else was doing it. I felt, I guess, I just threw it down. I don't know what came over me. The guy said to me, why did you do that? My friend, I said, I don't, I don't know why. I mean, everybody does it. There's no trash cans. Look at the, it's trash everywhere. He said, just because everybody does it doesn't mean you need to do it. Pick it up, put it in the trash. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is, you know, respect where you are. Just because other people may or may not, you know, don't, don't, don't take these bad practices. Take the good, inshallah ta'ala. So, go ahead, brother. Yeah, just my point is uh, the Muslim at any place, is supposed to to affect on the others and to choke the others with his manners. With, ahead, he, with his manners. So, uh, and this is also a way of, of da'wah. Whatever you, you should affect on the others by, by, by every good thing yes, you make. Yes, great point. Yes. Uh, at least smiling uh, to make things for Allah without no money or something back. Yes. This is, this is you must... The Muslim, you must choke everyone by, by his manners. This yeah. is my point. You know, Musa Sir Antonio told me, look, you have the people's heart here. Everybody wants to go to America and Australia, and we came here. You have their heart, so be patient and be kind. Give people a break. Talk to them nicely. This is the golden opportunity of Dawah. When they say you come here, yeah. then this give them self-esteem. You know, be positive. So, uh, inshallah ta'ala, I guess with that, uh, we'll have to end the episode, brothers. I certainly appreciate it. One, one last thing go before ahead. we end the episode. I had something in mind. I guess... Uh, the Sunnah is a culture on its own. And a lot of the converts, when they come to uh, Islamic countries, if they gather with the, with the practicing Muslims on the Sunnah, that's a culture. That's a common culture everywhere. Yes, great point, but I, I certainly appreciate that. 
Uh, thank you. That's a perfect way to end the episode. Brother Muhammad Hamza, the host of Book Review. Thank Brother you. Mahmoud Sayyid from him. Florida State University. I certainly appreciate your time. And we can't end the episode without thanking all the guys in the control room behind the scenes. Brother Osama Shami, Muhammad Shauki, Mah uh, Mautaz Nabil, Akhil Mahmoud, uh, Rabia Ali, Samir Ali, Ihab Abi Yazid, all the brothers here in the channel. If I forgot you, I apologize, inshallah ta'ala. Of, of course, we have to thank Allah for giving us the strength to make another episode of mm -hmm. Let's Talk. I can't forget Ahmed Sayyid all the way from Alexandria, Egypt. You guys, next until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mm -hmm.